This is Solartron Wireless Training Part B. For this training, we will be using two basic Wii gauges, a single channel like this with a 10 millimeter diameter head and a multi-channel with four probes attached. So first we will discuss uh, connecting and running your Wii gauges directly to a Windows-based computer. So first step you will wanna take is go to the Solartron website, go over service and support, and then drivers and software. Scroll down and then you will want to download and install the wireless support pack for Windows, 520167. The next step you will want to do is set up the Wii gauge with the Bluetooth antenna on your computer or with the dongle that we provided. So the first thing you'll want to do is actually take the Wii gauge and then press the top button to turn it on. There should be a steady blue light. Then the next thing is on your computer itself, go into the lower right hand corner, click the arrow, and highlight the Bluetooth icon. Then click add a Bluetooth device. Then click up here, add Bluetooth or other device, and click Bluetooth again. So now your computer is searching for it. So eventually it should pop up on the screen. And how it's going to appear is it's going to show WHT, which means wireless hand tool, and then the serial number of your Wii gauge. So if you check on the side of your handle, the serial number should match the number that you see up there. Now, in some cases, too, it could ask for a password, which is 61735. For this one, it just let it connect. Now, if you'll note, uh, we've also added the multi-channel hand tool. And here, the appearance is going to be a little bit different. If you'll see, it says WHT-M. M, of course, mean, meaning multi-channel. And then the same as before, the serial number, which will also be on the side of the multi-channel hand tool. Now, one thing worth noting before we get started with the Wii gauges and the software is you should take note what virtual COM port your computer has assigned the Wii gauges. To find that, you actually go to your control panel. Then click Devices and Printers. Now, if you'll see down here, this is where a list of Wii gauges that have been set up on the computer. So now if you right click and click Properties, and go to hardware, if you'll note, this Wii gauge, which is one I just set up, is COM4. So take note of that, click OK. And then this is the multi-channel Wii gauge, and the COM port for that is COM12. So now, once you have installed the wireless software, as well as connected your Wii gauges to the computer, the next thing you can do is open the wireless suite. When you install the support pack, it will have an icon on your desktop like so, and you can also scroll through your list of software and find it as wireless support pack for Windows. So that will open a window like this, very similar to the Orbit suite. And you have three tabs at the top. WHT, which means wireless hand tool. So this is involves the single channel Wii gauge. Then you have WHT-M. This involves the multi-channel Wii gauge. And then you have utilities, which includes a wireless configuration manager, a manual, a port testing, as well as a programming example. So we're going to start with just the wireless hand tool. We're going to click wireless hand tool manager. Now this is a basic software pack that you can use if you want to just take basic readings with the Wii gauge. First thing you'll want to do is click connections. And then for a bubble like this, you should have a list of available tools, but in certain cases, because computers have shifted around or uh, computer manufacturers have shifted around directories, it might not be listed here. Now, if that's the case, what you want to do is then click all ports. And if you'll see all the different virtual COM ports that the computer has created are listed here. And if you remember for the Wii gauge, it was COM port four, which is this one right here. So now we will click connect. And that will bring up the particular Wii gauge that we have set up. And then if you note on your hand tool, the top light should now be blinking. So now click done. So this is the basic readout screen. And with this, you can connect up to seven Wii gauges on your computer. We're just going to stick with one for now. And you have some of the basic commands. So you have zero, preset, absolute, and peak reset. 
So the next step you'll want to take is to perhaps change the settings of the Wii gauge itself. For that, what you'll want to do is actually highlight the particular Wii gauge, then click settings and highlight probe settings. Now here you have a series of several tabs along the top here. Uh, the first one is stream settings. And this basically enables the Wii gauge to continually stream readings into uh, the computer. Um, if you click this off, the only time the Wii gauge will send a reading is when you press a button or, you know, tag it basically. The next is power settings. Um, there's two main items here. First is here you have enable auto power down. Um, this basically turns it off after a certain amount of time. Like right now we have it set to 235 seconds. I'm actually going to click that off for now. Then we also have Bluetooth class setting. Now by default, the Wii gauge is set to class one, which is the uh, most powerful Bluetooth setting, which you can actually change it to class two or class three. Like class three is typically what a Bluetooth earpiece is. The thing about class three is that it's not as powerful a signal, but it does drain less battery. So some customers have switched it down to class three because they want the Wii gauges to last a little bit longer outside of a charging station. For now, we'll just keep this at class one. Anytime you make a change, you'll want to click apply. Then you also have limits settings here. This is where, of course, like with any other um, device, you can set tolerance limits as well as uh, warning limits. So for here, we're just going to set it at you know, 10.25, set the lower limit at 9.75, the limit LEDs. See what it says both. You have both green and red. Now that, now that has to do with the buttons or excuse me, the lower button towards the battery. You can have them flash green and red. Green, of course, when, when it's within tolerance, red when it's out. Then you have limit buzzer. And this is where you can have basically three beeps when it when you're taking a reading that you know is outside the fail limits or just one beep. So we'll just set this on three. And then we'll even enable the warning limits here. We have it set to 10.2 and 9.8. Then reading settings. So this is where you can set uh, different uh, preset values and zero values, as well as a few other things. One thing you can actually apply is a multiplication factor. Um, so that's where if you want to change the scaling, you know, by default, it is in millimeters. But here you can actually change the scaling. For example, if you want to change it to 25 or something else. Right now, we're just going to keep that at one. Here's where you enter your preset value. This will keep at 10. And then it says operation mode. If you click here, you see there's actually several different operation modes here. If you switch it to max on the display screen on the side of the Wii gauge, it will actually display the max value. And that's what you can send or record. Then you have also as an option min value. And then there's also differential value. Now differential value is actually where you're taking the max minus the min. And then you can also do it like normal tagged, max tagged. And this is where like, Anytime you press the button on the Wii gauge, it will then take the max value or the min value and send it to the computer. We'll just keep it at normal. That here, of course, you can adjust the number of decimal places. Now up here, it says, you know, of course, if you've taken out a max and min, this is where you can clear it. And then for forward and reverse, this actually has to do with uh, the values themselves. When you have it at forward, that means that when you first press the tip, it's going to read at zero and read all the way to 10 millimeters. If you have it reverse, it will actually do the opposite. It will start at 10 millimeters and flash all the, and go all the way to zero when the probe inside the Wii gauge is fully pressed. We'll keep this at four. Then for tool display orientation, again, this has to do with the, the display on the side. For auto rotate, what it's actually going to do is if you rotate it, is if you rotate the Wii gauge or the orientation around, this will automatically, you know, change with you, just like say, perhaps the way your iPhone does it. Or you can just lock it one particular way. So just 90, 270 degrees, whatever you prefer. We'll just keep it on auto rotate. Then you have display layout. Um, this will we have for standard, but you also enough have an option where you can have large letters. Now the next tab will be the button settings. And this has to do with the two buttons on the Wii gate itself. If you'll see you have buttons mode, there's normal and then there's advanced. Now with normal, 
what you do is you set up button one, which is the one towards the top. You can have it be tag, zero, or preset. And then button two, which is a one at the bottom towards the battery, you can also have it one of these three settings as well. What most customers do is have the top one be the tag, then have the bottom one be zero or a preset. We'll just set the bottom one to zero. Then you have the button buzzer, and this, like any time you press the top button, it'll make a sound like this. And then for the power off, that's where like you can press one of the buttons, hold it down for a certain amount of time, and then it will flip off. But now with advanced mode, if you click it to advanced mode, what it is is that you can actually sit, change it to different modes like what you see in the graphic here. Where actually if you press first button one, and then press button two uh, one time, that'll give you the zero function. If you perhaps press button one and then button two five times, that'll change it to the mid mode, for example. So this is something where you need to be aware of the di different button pushings or perhaps have the charts handy. But what most customers do is just keep it to normal. Then the last is the checksum settings. Uh, the checksum is basically a process by which um, the data from or the information from the Wii gauge sent to the computer is validated. But typically for a uh, class one Bluetooth, you know, this doesn't need to be uh, worried about, to be honest. So the next thing we'll want to set up is to take readings. For that, we'll go back to settings and then highlight application settings. And here you have two tabs, logging settings and general settings. We're gonna click the general settings tabs first. If you'll see how it, there's one option for global application settings, this is for saving the settings of not just the Wii gauge, but also the, but also the settings of the software on your computer. So for this, you can just click on the box and then even save a file for all the settings for the software in case you need to transfer the settings to a different computer. Then you have the option for password settings. This is, of course, if you click enable password, you can then generate a password and a user cannot change the settings until the password is entered. But now if we go to logging settings, you actually have three different options for generating a file of data from the Wii gauge. First, you have a comma separated values logging. That is probably the most common as most software packs can open that. Then you also have the option to log into Microsoft Excel. And then you also have SPS logging. Then at the bottom here, this is where you can set up your log file name. So for example, we could just name this Wii gauge one. Click save. Then you can also put a date and time string to it in case you wish to have just a quick reference as to when this file was created. So we're just going to click, yeah, enable CSV logging. And if you notice, you have two options here, all readings and tagged readings. For all readings, remember how we had the settings for streaming the readings into the computer? If you have all readings, if your streaming settings is turned on, it will start to stream all the readings that the Wii gauge is taking. So if you have it taking... 30 readings a second, you know, on the stream setting, it's going to dump 30 readings a second onto a spreadsheet. So for this, what the more common thing to do is just to go with tag readings. So then again, I think we have everything set here. So now we'll click close. Now let's just adjust the screen here a bit. Let's just have the range be from nine to 11. Cause again, we're measuring a hole that is 10 millimeters in diameter. Plays the mastering piece on, click preset. So now we're at 10 millimeters. Now, if you'll notice, once you have set up um, a logging function, it says here, start logging and stop logging. So now we're just gonna click start logging. I'm just gonna take some measurements. And if you'll notice, if you hear the button, that is tagging that it's everything is within specification. Now I'm taking a measurement that is like at the warning limit, but if I have something that's within outside of the limits, so you'll notice a change in the tone. If you'll also note the button on the side there, how the lower button there will actually change from green, like what you see there, to red. Then once you hit stop logging, 
you'll see show last log. And by default, this should open it up in Microsoft Excel. So if you'll see, this is a Microsoft spreadsheet. Here is the name of the tool, valid reading, the actual reading itself, the unit of measure, in limit, under limit, here is the timestamp, and then it even has an entry of the battery if you have low battery. And you also have the tag number here. Now it should be noted, this is just a basic software package that can be used for logging data from a Wii gauge. If a customer wishes to uh, build their own program in about around this, or perhaps incorporate it into their own software, there is that option as well. If we go back to the Wii gauge suite, excuse me, the wireless support pack, uh, you do have a hand tool manual and as well as a hand tool.net manual. And if you open this, You'll see just like the orbit library, you have a multitude of commands that can be incorporated into any software. If you do perhaps require assistance on this, you can contact Solartron customer support. In addition, there's also a hand tool RS232 manual because actually just about any command uh, can actually be run through simple RS232 commands. And again, all of these are available on the wireless support pack. Now, next we will discuss connecting a multi-channel wireless hand tool directly to a computer over Bluetooth. Now for that, Solartron does not have any basic software package. Um, we do have an ability to connect to Orbit GCS via a wireless connection module. We will discuss that in a second. But one thing we do have is a basic configuration utility program, as well as a program and example and then in the manuals, you do have the multi-channel software protocol manual, and this shows how to connect to the multi-channel Wii gauge over .NET. But what we will do for now is connect to the Wii gauge multi-channel configuration utility. Now, the first thing you will want to do, if you are a member, you had to save the, you know, or write down the COM port or the virtual COM ports that the computer assigned for the multi-channel Wii gauge. For that, that was COM12. So we will click COM12, make sure the Wii gauge is turned on, and then click Connect. Now you should see the uh, top button, the one closest to the tool, blinking consistently with a blue light. So here is all the different settings that you can do from the multi-channel hand tool. In addition, you have a pane on the right-hand side showing all the different um, commands. So up top, you do have the serial number, then you have the device settings. Again, you can choose different Bluetooth classes, um, the buzzer configuration, so that will have for tag taken. Um, how often, do you, how much time do you want to power off the device? That's an option. You also have the battery status. Also, you have the button and LED settings. Now it should be noted that button one is the one closest to the battery, and then button two is the one closest to the top hand tool. And then it says here LED configuration. And if you'll see, there's actually three options here. Um, LED one is actually gonna be the light inside the button closest to the battery. And then LED two is actually in button number one as well, but it can actually flash red. So right now we have it so right now we have button one just streaming and when you have it like this it will just be consistently blinking green and then button two you can have also streaming range error all okay or low battery if you would like right now we'll just have it for let's have it for low battery for example and then light three is for button number two which is up towards the tool again you can also have this for streaming range error all okay or low battery now there's also stream settings as well. Um, you know, for this again, you can click enable streaming and then have the rate. For example, it's like 100 milliseconds in between reading. This you can reduce or increase. 
Now also it says rate, see how it says mode binary or ASCII two. That has to do with the information that is sent from the Wii gauge to the computer. It could be sent in binary form or ASCII two form. You can refer to the manual for more information. And it also says, if you'll note here, this is for, again, the um, streams of code. It says include preamble, include tag and stream data, include digital inputs. You also have the display settings, and that's for the display on the side. You can have it auto-rotate or just have it clockwise one or clockwise, clockwise two, have it on, have it for charts. Then at the bottom, if you'll see, these are for this particular Wii gauge, these are the four channels that are set up. And these have their own particular IDs, like so. Then in the lower right-hand side, you have log data to file. This is actually an optional um, data log that you have. And then even at the bottom, it also says display last stream. Then it also says show channel charts. So if you pull this up and then press the probes, it will actually show measurements being made. So again, all of these different things can be done through .NET commands and can also be incorporated into your own customer software. So that concludes part B of the Solartron wireless training. For part C, please click on the I in the upper right hand corner. Or again, if you are watching this on the training playlist on the Solartron YouTube channel, please stay tuned. It should be playing momentarily. Thank you.